Hello, I'm Chip McGee, Superintendent of Schools in the Pelham School District. Welcome to another episode of Pelham School District Today. We're on location at Pelham High School and um, I have a special guest with me, Casey Locke of the uh, uh, Pelham High School uh, Faculty and Art Department. And Casey, we're going to talk a little bit about how the year's going, about the Art Department, about things that have been going on. Why don't you just start off? We were talking before. How long have you been here? And so what year is this and what are you teaching this year? Um, this is my 18th year. Um, Pelham, oh. Pelham Proud. Um, 18. 18. Uh-huh. I know. We were also talking about the uh, the box hair that I use. You can't tell. No. Uh, I, mean, <laughs> I should start using that. It might help me. It's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's the, it's the trick I picked up. Um, but yeah, 18 years and, and honestly um, excited about not just our department, but the direction of, of where we're at, and, and I have the context of knowing kind of where we've where we've been, mm-hmm. and you know moving forward in uh, in a lot of different really cool things. Um, 18 years into it, it's, it's it's an exciting thing to still be a part of. Yeah, I remember um, when I first joined the district, uh, there were a couple things that I knew um, by reputation. Uh, I knew there was going to be a really good football team here. For sure. Uh, I knew that uh, it was uh, a delight to get the addition and the renovation done at the high school because that had been such a long fight. Uh, Big big difference, big impact that made. And I knew that the art department, I love saying this sentence, is uh, definitively the best art department in the state of New Hampshire. There's no doubt about it. I like I like to think that's uh, the team I work with, uh, the art teachers I work with, um, the ones that have come through before that kind of helped us to to build what I what I, I like to think of as a thing we're really proud of. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll let you say the word best, but mm-hmm. I, I I appreciate that. Uh, it's the thing that we care a lot about. Yeah, and you know it's every year seeing the kids come in, especially the ones coming into intro to art. And I remember being a, a young man that, you know, wasn't sure how good I was at certain things mm-hmm. and and what a difference that makes if you if you try a thing and it goes well mm-hmm. and you start to believe, hey, this is a thing I can do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think there's that idea that some folks have that art is a thing that you're born good at or, or not. And yeah, that's, exactly. that's the rest of your life. But, you know, what we try to do here is to to prove that it's a learnable skill like anything else that we teach here at Pelham and uh, and the, the number of kids that we have you know coming back for our classes and and producing work that man I wasn't I wasn't doing that kind of stuff when I was in high school <laughs> no. uh, so it's it it it's cool to be a part of and I'm, and I'm lucky to be a part of it. yeah yeah I um, uh, walk through the showcase each year mm. and uh, it really does take my breath away what they're able to do and uh, when other uh, superintendents, people in, in around the state ask me, so there's, there is, I promise them, there's nothing special in the water. It's <laughs> not that um, we just happen to live in a town that is loaded with uh, the most talented artists. It's that we have a program here that teaches them how to become good and, and also that they love being a part of. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it, it obviously starts at... Um, you know, it, it starts somewhere. There's, yeah. there's some kids they come in and they they already have an interest in it. Mm-hmm. Maybe they have a, a parent or a relative that painted or, or just exposed them to that at a, at a younger age. Um, and some folks will think it's genetic. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'm not sure what the research says mm-hmm. on that, but mm-hmm. I think the number of kids that that come through here and just prove to themselves how how much better they can get at a thing mm-hmm. it shows that Gene's done a much to what's to do with it right um, but also there's some kids that at the elementary level they they just something clicked for them at yeah. the middle school level they did a project and they were so proud of it and something clicked for them they they come in uh, during the showcase as well and they, they proudly hang their work and and then later later on we see some of these same kids and they'll say do you remember that piece that it was, it was Tom Brady or it was whatever it was right. you know, that, that they did a picture of and 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 they make those connections there they, they remember the moment they they got inspired, and, and you know, so the amount of times that 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 happens is 
it's cool to be a part of, and, and it's cool when it happens up here. Um, but it, you know, it's, it's happened at all three levels, man. These, the, the support we have from um, from our district, from our admin, from the SAU, to to just to just keep doing what we're doing, mm -hmm. and and to support you know the kids is a big reason I'm still here. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not just saying this because the superintendent said it. <laughs> it's it's a thing that I passionately tell people. That, yeah. Like I I plan on just being in that problem my entire career if if they'll have me mm -hmm. um, because of the support for an area that sometimes gets overlooked. Right. Um, the, the truth is art is academically not the first thing that, that some folks might think about when you go to school, what the things you're going to learn, but the creative skills that kids take away from it, even if they don't go into a creative field, thinking in that way, right. problem solving in that way, and just knowing that there's, there's maybe not one right answer to a, a thing, well, how common is that to like our real lives? Right. And and just practicing the, those types of moments. So, you know, it's I think it's it's an important job. It's it's one that I feel fortunate to to have. It is, um, and it's uh, was already a value here when I showed up that yeah, uh, sure. art was a priority. Um, one of the things I'm interested in talking with you about is there's a lot of uh, instruction, interesting instructional questions that come up as an art teacher. Mm. I was a high school science teacher, and um, in some ways they were very different uh, um, uh, in terms of the content, and in some ways they're very similar that you're just working with materials uh, seeking particular outcomes um, and uh, I wanted to ask you about the professional learning community mm, or the yep. PLC process that you're a part of yeah. um, uh, if you could just kind of explain for people what that is and um, uh, what uh, what you're working on with PLCs right now yeah I mean it's it's evolving right? mm -hmm. so we, we've had these for a few few years now and it started um, departmentally, yeah, and we we got to work closely with um, the members of our department to you know to talk about some of those things that you just may not find the time to t to talk about in your in your day as a, as a teacher. Uh, things about the curriculum itself, or like this is a this is a project I taught, and someone else is like I, I teach that class, I taught the same project. How come yours went so well? Yeah, and diving into that, and really figuring out like what was that that moment where it just clicked for that kid or. Or maybe there's, you know, some student that's finding success here and, and not here, and we can chat about that and say, ah, you know what, you know, that, that light bulb moment, you know, what worked for me or what worked for that student. Um, so that's what it started out as, and it was, it was valuable. Um, but truth be told, I, I love my department. Mm -hmm. I, I know them. We talk all the time. Right. And that, that time is kind of just baked into, you know, after school or, or we're, you know, on the phone or whatever it is, we're, we're geeking out over educational stuff anyway. The cool thing that I think is, uh, is being done this year, um, and credit to, I'm sure there's a whole team of folks that put it together, but I know Mr. Barry has really been, you know, pushing the, yep. some of the collaborative PLCs and some of the, um, the sort of different sections of PLC groups that are inter like departmental where mm -hmm. there, you know there might be someone from science and math and languages and, and art and and it's a moment that we get um, either once or twice a week to get together with a group of folks and and to just chat about what's working mm -hmm. right? to chat about what's challenging so you're in a room you're you're not in a room with just our teachers for these for these this you're is in a room with people that across all the curriculum. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And, you know, I mean, it's, we have, uh, in, in my group, uh, our, li our librarians with us. Uh -huh. So we get oh, that, nice. pers that perspective too in special ed and, and all these different areas of the building and administration is part of that too. And they've been rotating there too. And, and they're, they're part of these great discussions that are happening. And through these discussions, we're kind of hearing some similar themes. Mm. And many of them are really good things and really exciting things like, our, our freshman group this year is so excitable. They're so happy to be here. Yeah. They're like they're saying yes to things and they want to try it and they they're passionate about that. And so I found out, oh, that's not just in the art room that's happening. That's great. Mm -hmm. And then other things, you know, where it's like, man, this has been a bit of a challenge. And someone else says, hey, me too. Mm -hmm. so, well, what are you doing? What are you? What are we all doing collectively about that? And one of the cool things that I took away from this um, 
and this will, this will be a moment of uh, brutal honesty here. All right, let's hear it. In education sometimes, I think probably in every industry, there's like, there's always the new initiative, right? Right. And sometimes with the new initiative, it comes along and everyone's jazzed about it and, you know, you play along and you're like, you know, we'll see how, how long this lasts. And then right. there's always something else and maybe it goes with the trends. So with this new format that we tried this year, I was sitting there in the group of, uh, the mixed group that we have. And some of them I, I kind of knew well, they've been here for many years, and some I was meeting for the first time with new teachers to the district and to, to Palm High School. And we got talking. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how valuable this would be. And I told myself in that moment, and I think everyone else in that group did too, because we are now passionately talking about this stuff. I said to myself, I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna make this matter to me, and I'm gonna put this to use, I'm gonna make this effective. And now I'm hoping that this format or something like this is a thing that we can carry carry through. Mm. And that it's back next year and that we do it in different ways or we just find the time to do it because I think it is so important. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that had come up was talking about um, just like communication strategies. Mm -hmm. Things like eye contact mm -hmm. or thing, things like, you know, you're, you're explaining something when you're talking to to a group of people, are, are you looking around the room? Are you like, are you gesturing? Are you speaking slow enough that someone understands you? Are you, um, are you using inflection in your voice? Are you? I mean, what are you doing to get someone to care about the thing that you're saying? And right. as adults, we figure it out. As teachers, we figure it out. Because if you don't, no one's probably going to take the time exactly. to hear what you're saying. Yeah, you learn it the hard way. You do. Mm -hmm. you're thrown into the into the fire there. But but as kids, I was. We were talking as a group and kind of saying, wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be great if they, and some kids are phenomenal at it. They're just super confident. They're great public speakers. And I, and I thought about it more and I said, well, what if we tried it? Like, I'm an art teacher. There's not too many times that I can actually, like, have kids practice these, these big moments of public speaking, but I, because it's studio stuff and they're right. hyper independent and mm -hmm. they're, they're usually, you know, quiet and working or like, lasered in on their, their but, thing. But there is one cool thing that we, that we do, that we can do, and it's the moments where they kind of show each other their work uh -huh. and we have, we have critiques. And I said, well, what if we kind of flip this? And what if, instead of caring about the work and caring about what we're saying, what if instead we just care about how we say it? here's an opportunity where the same stuff I'm hearing in these PLC groups where we can put this into practice and have kids try things like like eye contact mm -hmm. and so at a table similar to this and this was one of the things I picked up from the, the PLC group one yeah. of the things that uh, was just a you know a collection of different strategies and I said that one sounds cool I've never done that and so and what was the name of it I think it was called a fishbowl fishbowl a fishbowl uh, so uh, it would be a table like this, and you have a small group of kids sitting at this. We had about six or eight of, of this group of kids. It was an advanced art class. Um, and they were all working on these hyper-independent things, so all pretty cool, but about halfway through it, great time to hear feedback, right? So these six kids, this is our panel, and they're going to have a discussion. And everyone else in the class, 10 to 12 other kids, they're on the outside of the fish bowl. Like outside watching the fish in the bowl. Yeah. And so <laughs> the version we did was this modified version of it. And the example there was, it was cool. And I was like, yeah, that could work. But this one, instead of just having people observe the discussion, because of what we cared about, and I kind of wrote some stuff on the board that mm -hmm. we really care about for, for that day, um, I wanted the folks on the outside to give us feedback feedback on how well that was going. Right. How well those pieces, at a table where folks are sitting around and you're looking at the work and you might ask a question of the artist, instead of just saying the thing that comes to your mind, what if you formed that thought as a question for the other people that are sitting here and you put it to them? Mm -hmm. Like what a cool moment. Like I, I don't remember sitting in class when I was in high school feeling like, like being prompted with that or yeah. feeling like that was an option. Right. Where I could just say, hey, how does everyone feel about this? Mm -hmm. Like, as a kid, that's so scary. That's right. 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 That's right. It, and sets off a completely different dynamic in the room. Completely. It, uh, yeah. It's very in, much more inviting as opposed to directive and yeah. opens up to the next ten questions yeah. or comments. And so my, like, kind of 
sneaky goal here and the strategy here is I was like, I, I want all these kids to like sound like like little adults, fully formed, like confident adults that are that are speaking about a thing that they know a lot about. Yeah. But doing with like conviction and, and doing it in a manner that someone else is gonna say, they're gonna remember what they say and they're gonna say, Oh, what a great point. Or they're yeah. gonna say, like, you know, I, I remember what uh, what Sarah said about this thing, and I'm going to connect it to the, the other point I'm making here, which, by the way, in this discussion, these connections were happening. And you started to hear from them, like, similar things that, as the teacher, I hadn't even noticed within the work. Uh -huh. Brilliant observations said in a manner that I was watching this group of students and literally it would have thought, you would have thought this was like, you know, final year BFA students mm -hmm. at, at the university level talking about the, you know, the strength of their portfolio and the direction they were going and what it meant. It was such a, it was such a moment for me to sort of not just be proud, not just say, hey, it worked, but to say, these kids can be challenged mm -hmm. to the greatest extent and they will rise to it. Oh, that's and, nice. And they, you know, and, and so some of the things that we've been internally discussing, the challenges that we, we kind of see uh, in our PLCs and we talk to other teachers departmentally, you know, some of the challenges and I think for a couple of years now we've been hearing about with remote learning like some of the, you know, and the truth is it's going to have some impact. Right? Students have struggled with social interactions totally. or with face-to-face -face conversations as opposed to totally. through a screen, those and sorts of things. Yeah. Especially at ages where that was so really, formative. They're really practicing. They really need to practice it. Mm -hmm. They're trying to figure out where they fit in. They're trying to figure out who they are. Like these years, that man, maybe they just weren't there for those important things. Can we get them there? Right. And so, and we can, because I watched these kids who they were already really cool, impressive kids. They they were talented kids, and they they could speak about their work. But I watched them showing it off and flexing it in a space that was previously not somewhere they probably would have felt like super safe to like to try these things out even saying like well, talk a little slower next time mm -hmm. so that fishbowl and the kids on the outside they could give that real-time feedback and after a session when after we talked to talked about one one student's work um, we heard from the, the crowd we yeah heard from the observers and they would say some of them would write quotes and they'd say I thought this was a really nice moment they would read it and then the kid that said that quote Probably felt pretty good, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, wouldn't if someone wrote down the thing you said in your own words and read it back to you, heard it. you're going to feel great about that. So, you could just see them kind of buying into this idea. And I know I, I I talked to Adam afterwards. Mr. Barry is one of the assistant principals, and I said, he said, how'd it go? You know, I was going to do it. And I said, we only got through six kids, which is fine. I said, we got we got to go again. Mm-hmm. You have to come in and see this. Oh, so nice. I invited him in for the next time that we did it, and and it was just as effective. And, and the kids, they really seemed to get a lot about it, a lot out of it. And they they even gave us the feedback afterwards, and they sort of said like, um, you know, I one kid had said I I just I heard myself it was like I was out outside watching myself. I heard myself saying things, and like I, I liked it. I like how it felt. I oh, felt nice. I felt. Him, I felt impressive. Mm -hmm. I was like, yes, like that's that's you now. Like you you have that skill. You now know you're capable of doing that. That's right. Got the skill and uh, evidence that that he's capable of it. Um, the the thing I want to circle all the way back to is, uh, if I have it right, the source of this, um, the idea to say, oh, here's you know, fishbowl is one of these bunch of strategies, mm -hmm. and I'm going to give it a try, uh, came from this uh, cross-curriculum PLC uh, that in that room and, and yeah. your attitude going in to say hey let's give this a try yeah. is really what uh, what sparked that yeah and I I feel like that's I mean I, I'm only part of that of one group it's it's a team PLC six I think is the number so it tells you there's at least five other ones mm -hmm. and they're all having their own discussions but at least I know for sure in this group when I meet with this group of folks everyone is making we're really there's honesty that's happening. Yeah, we are really communicating, uh, I think, well with each other about how it's going, and and it's a bit of a support system, but it's also it's practical. Yeah, it's, it's productive. Yeah, it's a thing that 
I didn't realize could be so effective and that, that would make an impact that, you know, that, that's something that, you know, maybe a, like a math teacher could share with me mm -hmm. that I would say, I'm going to try that yeah. in, in an art class. Exactly. Right? How cool is that? Very cool. So, yeah, I, I think just having an opportunity of time during the day where, you know, professionals can, can chat with each other about, you know, about what works and actually challenge themselves, especially when they hear good feedback about something. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, I did it. You yeah. guys, guys got to try this. Yeah. And I, I'm hoping they can work that into, into some of their plans and some of their curriculum. Um, but I, I spoke about it as passionately there as, as I am now. Yeah. And, and genuinely that this was a big win. This was a big moment where it's, we kind of saw, hey, this, this thing that we've been saying is important to do, mm -hmm. here's the evidence. Yeah, so, and I'm going to go all the way back about it. So, over the last really two years, there's been a lot of um, staff surveys. Um, and one of the recurring themes is I, uh, staff, particularly, so teachers talking about how much, how, how connected they feel and supported by their teachers. It's just like you said. The ones I know, they would often say, yeah. you know, at elementary, they'd say, I know my first grade team so well, right. if they're a first grade teacher. I know my art department so yeah. well. Um, and uh, there was a refrain in there, which was, but I don't know the rest of the staff as well, and I know they're great people. Yeah. Um, and uh, I know that uh, Don Mead, the principal here, took that to uh, heart uh, yeah. in developing this. So yeah. It's kind of like uh, the steps all lined up, so it's very nice to see it. Um, yeah, I, I think that's, again, this is my 18th year in the district, and it's any job where you're, you're genuinely pretty busy throughout the day, mm -hmm. and you have, you have certain goals, and you have, you have things that are important mm -hmm. and you have to get, get to, uh, you likely will get to know the folks that you work most closely with. And then beyond that, no matter what industry you're in, beyond that, unless you're unless your job is to specifically interact with everyone else that's in that building that you're in, you just may not have the luxury and the time and, you know, we, we, we need to prioritize. I, I have not only been fortunate to, you know, make connections throughout the years with people that I, you know, they're not in my department and I consider them dear friends, mm -hmm. um, but it's still a limited group. Mm -hmm. And every time I wind up you know, maybe even chat with folks at the middle school or the elementary school or, um, you know, or, or just, you know, vi visiting the library and there's another class happening in there and you just happen to ask the kids what's going on. And mm -hmm. There's a teacher I haven't really had the chance to, like, chat right. about what they're doing. So those moments would happen every now and then. Mm -hmm. This is now a guaranteed time that you will be able to make those connections and to kind of realize... Um, that there's other folks in here that that maybe they have they have some nugget of wisdom they have uh, a kind word to to give you especially if during these meetings you sort of said hey here's what I'm struggling with yeah that someone can help you through that right and then my guess you're going to have some some friendships that are formed you're going to have some folks reaching out outside of these PLC sections and say like hey that it's like with this thing that I tried, hey, that thing you said, I did it. It <laughs> works. It's magic. Yeah, like, you know. So it's it's we're two months into the year. Mm -hmm. I don't even know all the good that that might give. You right. Know, you know. Right. So yeah, I I agree with you. The, the sentiment that wow, it would be great. I know there's great people here. It'd be great to have that opportunity. It's a great vehicle for it. Yeah. Good. Oh, that is so good. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the one of the takeaways that I've had this year is. Um, I feel like three years in, I now, um, my job is to be, you know, to know most people, uh, but I don't get to uh, have routine meetings uh, with most, most staff. Uh, but now, now I, I know well enough that this place, uh, this school district is loaded with really talented staff. Yeah. Um, so long as we can get them talking to each other and uh, those those conversations about teaching and learning, they're just going to make us get better and better. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and also, you know, if you 
you were able to you were able to know the entirety of the staff, and I've been here long enough that I sure know most of them. Mm -hmm. um, and so w we might see that, we might know that, and but imagine being a new staff member. Oh my you, gosh! You and, I, you and I both were right. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're having a challenge with something, and if you don't have a large bank of people you can go to, I think this type of thing this connective tissue that allows for people to know each other, mm -hmm. I think it's probably going to be most beneficial for, for some of our new hires. And, you know, in the next year, you might say, ah, we got, we got a heck of a lot less jobs to fill. Yes. Because the people that maybe before wouldn't have been able to, wouldn't have known to reach out, wouldn't have felt like there was this huge support system of people, they're getting that this year. They're certainly getting a lot more than, I, I think, a lot of districts that don't have something organized for yeah. this to happen, yeah. that's a huge win. That's a huge benefit. That's uh, If I was a first-year teacher, and I, and I literally had the chance every week to talk to a handful of teachers, all different experiences, veterans, other rookies, like from different areas, and make those, you're, you're going to meet people that just become your people. Yep. You're going to meet people that like, you know, you, you say, okay, it's not just me. And that is important in a field like education that, that can be high stress at times. Yep. That can, you know, have some, some amount of burnout. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not an easy gig. No. It, it's lovely for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. But, man, at first, we remember those early years. It's a, it's a challenge. Yeah, if you have someone who, who you're connected to for support, um, you're going to be okay. And if you don't... It makes all the difference. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I'm going to wrap it up there. This was really yeah, exactly what I was hoping to talk to. And I want to uh, thank the people for for listening and watching. Uh, this is Pelham School District today, and uh, we're over at uh, Pelham High School talking to art teacher extraordinaire Casey Locke. Thanks.